Hello, hello. Uh, it's Monday. <laughs> it's a rainy Monday, but you guys, everybody write this down as a day to remember in history. So I'm actually five minutes early, <laughs> not five minutes late for Monday motivation. Ha ha. <laughs> so, um, which is, yes, a miracle in itself. So, hey, Linda. Hey, Michelle. Um, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Um, so I'm five minutes early. I'm deciding to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to be early instead of late. I'm going to try to be early instead of late <laughs> from now on. And, um, Dan is not here today. Sorry. He definitely would. He loves to do these with me, but, um, he is at Levi's basketball camp or it's not camp. It's like, um, I don't know, scrimmages or something like that, or basketball, something or other like, um, tournaments. I think that's what it is in Grand Rapids today. So, Hey Ruth. Um, so thanks you guys for starting to join me a few minutes early here. I was just looking over my notes from yesterday because what I, what Dan and I wanted to talk about today was um, going over Dan's message from yesterday, from Sunday morning. And those of you who do not attend Res Life Cadillac, hey Debbie, um, if you can watch the live stream video of Dan's messages, they're going to be so good. Yesterday was the first one of a new series and it's called Intentional Living. Okay. Intentional Living. And like the subtitle would be Living with Purpose on Purpose, which I'm going to talk about some more in just a second. I'm just going to go through my notes that I took from yesterday, but I'm also going to um, recap sort of the women's conference from the weekend because that was powerful and there was a lot in the women's conference that went with what Dan preached about, about intentional living as well. Um, it just was really powerful and um, I'm excited for the rest of it. It's going to be really good. So if you don't go to a church and you want to watch the um, Dan's messages, on live stream they do archive them too so you can watch past ones if you want to hey kelly um it is livestream.com forward slash rlc cadillac all together so livestream.com forward slash rlc cadillac like that and so you can watch those at 9 and 11 on sunday mornings and it will be live what you know what we're experiencing you can watch online or you can just go later and you watch some of the past ones hey there annie um so thanks you guys for joining me so we're going to talk about intentional living living with purpose on purpose because everything in life you have to be intentional about um fulfilling your purpose or you'll just sort of wander around and not fulfill everything that God has planned for you in your life. Um, you have to be purposeful about it. Now, a lot of people make like, go, oh, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? And they make a big deal of trying to find out what exactly is my purpose. When God made it clear in the word of God that everybody has the same like general purpose. Everybody has the same general purpose, which is to love God and love people. It makes, it makes it super simple. The way that you fulfill that purpose can change a lot throughout your life because your gifts and your talents will be developed more and more through your life. You'll have different groups of people around you through your life. You'll have more influence at different times of your life. Um, when you actually start being intentional about living with that purpose, like um, feeling like, okay, I'm going to, in this environment that I'm in right now, I'm going to love God and I'm going to love the people that are in front of me. When you do that, then um, God will continue to expand your influence and you will um, continue having more opportunities to do it, to love God and love people in different ways. So throughout your life, your purpose is going to unfold more and more as you just 
fulfill that general purpose of love God and love people, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter who's around you. Okay, so, but you have to be on purpose about it. And then God will make it more and more specific and use your gifts that have been given to you for a very specific group of people. Okay, so um, why do we say that you've got to live with purpose on purpose? Like, why is it, does it have to be so purposeful? Well, you know how the Bible says faith without works is dead. <laughs> so that's in James. That's in the book of James. We want to pray about everything. We want to ask God and we want to talk to God about everything and pray about what direction should I go in? What, um, what uh, decision should I make here or whatever? But So you pray about it, but then you've got to take action on that thing that you're praying about because faith without works is dead, but faith with action behind it like prayer and faith with some action of obedience, acting on it, is alive and powerful. You know, Jesus always, when he did a miracle, he always told them to do something. Like he said to the man with a withered hand, before he was even healed, he said to that man, stretch out your arm and let me see. And as the man stretched out his arm, he was healed. Um, Jesus said to the lepers, he said, like, turn around and go back to the temple and show yourself to the priest. And as they started walking, that was when they were healed. They were healed as they were obedient to Jesus. Um, Jesus said to the um, lame man that he, he will, was healing, he was like, pick up your mat and walk. He told him to do something. He didn't tell him just like, okay, we'll sit there and um, I'll pray over you and then you'll just miraculously be healed. No, he said, um, pick up your mat and, and stand up. And as the man started standing up, that was when he got healed and he was able to actually stand on his legs that had previously been lame. Um, so there's always action with it. And here's a, an example, a modern day example. Okay, this is an example I wanted to tell on Saturday in my message um, to the women at the women's conference, but I didn't have time. It's just a shorter um, time frame for a message. But I... A couple of years ago, Dan and I were at um, Bethel Church in Redding, California, just to visit over the weekend. And at one of the services, somebody got up and started telling a testimony of this man who had been healed of a back condition that he had been struggling with for 12 years. Okay, he had been struggling with this back condition for 12 years. And the person was like, and we all rejoice because last week this man got miraculously, completely, instantaneously, totally healed as he went up for prayer at church. And so everybody's cheering wildly and really excited and stuff. And he goes, but I just want you to know that the real story behind the story is that we like to say these miracles happen instantaneously, but this was not an instantaneous healing. He said, the man did get instantaneously, miraculously healed, but he had gone up for prayer every single week every single Sunday for 12 years straight asking for prayer and for healing for his back. And so he never gave up. So that was his action that he had been putting to his faith. He, he had people agreeing with him in prayer. He was uh, praying and had faith that he was going to be healed. But for 12 years straight, he, he took action on his faith and he went up for prayer, believing that one of these times I am going to get my healing. And it was during that 12th year that he did get instantaneously, miraculously healed. So it was instantaneous, but it was not immediate because he had to put his faith into action for 12 years. So never give up, you guys. Hopefully that's encouraging to somebody. Never give up, but believe that uh, God wants to do for you what he said he would do and that um, as you are obedient, as you take action, your miracle will happen, okay? Um, so at the women's conference, we also talked about Luke 5, where Jesus said to Peter, um, take your boat out, go out a little bit deeper, and let down your nets again. 
take your crew out there and let down your nets again, even though they had been working hard all night and had not caught anything. And they were like, the fish are not biting today. Jesus, this does not make sense. Why would you ask us to first of all, go fishing during the daytime to go fishing and work hard after we've already been working all night and we are exhausted, our entire crew is exhausted. We just wanna go see our families. Why would you tell us to do that when obviously there are no fish out there right now? And Jesus was like, nope, just go out, go out again and let down your nets and I promise you that you're gonna have a catch. So Peter was obedient. He had to take action on his faith. He was like, okay, Jesus, since you say so, I'm just gonna believe you. And he, I don't know if he even fully believed that they would catch anything, but he went out a little deeper. He let down the nets. He took action on what Jesus said. And the result was a huge catch of fish, so much that the entire crew could not take it in by themselves. They had to call for help for another team of people, a whole other crew of fishermen to come and help them. And both nets were so, both boats were so full of fish that they almost, they were sinking. They were so full and heavy of fish. So the um, result of their obedience and taking action to their faith, being purposeful about what Jesus said to do, um, the result was way bigger than what they expected or way bigger than what they imagined. Um, so Dan was talking about uh, as you live with purpose on, on purpose, as you are intentional with God, whatever God asks you to do, just know that the result is going to be miraculous. It's going to be way more than you could ask or imagine. Matthew 19, 20, six says that with God, nothing is impossible. Yes, with people, things are impossible, but with God, when God asks you to do something and you're just being obedient to him, you can know that the impossible is gonna happen. That maybe the numbers don't add up on the paper, but if God asks you to do something, it's gonna be, the impossible is gonna happen. It's gonna be miraculous, okay? So just what, exactly what, um, what happened with Peter, what happened with the man at Bethel, uh, what happened with the man with the withered hand, you know, the man who was lame and uh, Jesus like, st take, take up your mat and walk. And he was like, uh, did you forget? I can't walk. You know, he didn't say that. He just, he got, he jumped up. And as he went, he was, or as he was obedient, he was healed. Um, even this weekend, just in the, the um, example of the people who spoke. Okay, so we had Danielle DeSmith speaking and she was telling a testimony of something she was obedient to and as she was obedient to God in a thing that didn't make sense to her or to lots of people God has been faithful to her and he is beginning to allow her to tell this testimony so that other people can be obedient to God and be blessed in it too and um be led by him. And then, then the other example is Jen Popenhagen, who, um, she has never spoken in front of people before, but she said yes to God when Dan and I asked her to come and speak at the women's conference. And even though she wanted to say no, kind of like Peter wanted to say no to Jesus about going out fishing again after they've been fishing all night. But she kind of wanted to say no because she was super nervous and she had never done anything like it before. But because she said yes, the result is freedom for her. I'm hearing from her and from her, the women at her church, that she has a new joy. She has a new freedom just for stepping out, saying yes to something that God was asking her to do um, by speaking in front of people. The result is new freedom, new joy. She, she has experienced the love of God for her. Like she has a new confidence in God's love for her because she just felt like, oh man, God came through for me. Like I was obedient to him and he came through. He did the impossible for me. So just know that your action is mighty. When you're obeying God, whatever it is that he asks you to say yes to, when you say yes and you act on that on purpose, that there's mighty power. This God's power is going to be behind it and it's way more than your own power. You can do way more with God's grace than you can do on your own. 
So as I was uh, listening to Dan's message, I was like writing down notes. And I was like, Lord, let my life display your power. Let me always say yes to you. And when I say yes to you, please don't just show me the results that are miraculous, but show everybody around me how miraculous and how powerful you really are. Um, don't ever let me doubt your love, Lord. I wrote that down. I was like, I want my life to display God's power and display God's love. So whenever I say yes to God, kind of like Jen Copenhagen, like she realized his love for her. That's what I want to happen. I want people to see God's love. Like when you're obedient and you realize, oh man, God came through for me. He loves me so much. You can't help but show that to the world. And when you show the authentic, real, powerful love of the Father, that you are just in awe of Him, for, and humbled by Him, that, God, you came through for me. You did the impossible for me. I just can't even believe this. That's what Peter said when they took in the, the, um, that huge catch of fish. He was like, Lord, I'm a sinful man. He fell down on his knees before Jesus, and he was like, I'm in awe of what you just did. This miracle, I didn't deserve it. You know, I was probably, he was probably complaining all night that he wasn't catching anything. And then Jesus gave him this huge miraculous catch without him even deserving it. And the same thing is true for you and I. When we just say yes to God, even when it doesn't make sense to us, we're going to be in awe of him. We're going to be in awe of the results and the reward that we get. And we don't deserve it. But we're going to be like, Lord, I can't believe you love me this much. I can't believe that you did this for me. You really are the God of the impossible. I want my life to display that, to display the awe of God, the power of God, like just a humbling amazement at, at who God is, because then you're showing the world who God really is and who, who he can be for them too. Um, so I thought this was really interesting. Dan said that Jeremiah 29, 11, it's a really common verse that we all like to use, especially with people who are like graduating from high school or something like, you know, uh, talking about their future or maybe they're getting married or, or something like that. Um, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a good future. And that's God speaking to his people. Well, it, it says earlier in that chapter that God was speaking to his people when they were rebellious. He was giving that promise to his people while they were being rebellious to him. So he, he gives that promise to us, even though we don't deserve it. He's telling us, I am always going to work out your future. I understand that sometimes you're rebellious and sometimes you're complaining because you're fearful. You don't know for sure if I'm going to come through for you. I get that. But here's my promise. This is who I am. I am always going to come through for you. I am going to give you hope. I'm going to give you a good future. Even though you don't see around the corner and you can't see how things are going to work out, if you will keep saying yes to me, I'm going to lead you along the best pathway for your life is what Psalm says. And I'm going to make sure that your future is a good future. I'm going to work out even those things that are painful for you right now. I'm going to work those things out for your good and I'm going to give you a prosperous and a good future um, out of it. So believe what God says, then take action on it. Yes, it is always a choice, Ruth. You are right. We always have a choice and it matters. It matters that we choose to say yes to God. It matters that we choose to believe him at his word because you guys, we will experience so much more of God's power and his miracles and be so much more effective for many people's lives if we choose to believe and act on what he said. Um, if we don't, we're just like, we might still fulfill some of our purpose of loving God and loving people, but if we don't um, say yes to the next new thing that is maybe unknown and a little bit scary, if we don't say yes to that, God can't expand our territory. He can't stretch us and grow us and get us into new groups of people until we say yes to him by faith and actually act on it with um, very purposeful faith. Okay, so that was all just the introduction, <laughs> but... Dan's three points that he was talking about, and I know some of you made some really good points up here. 
hey, David, um, hey, Susan, lots of you guys are joining us. So, yeah, um, Ruth, yeah, you said it's always a choice with God, which is true. So he will not force you to obey him. And that's why it's living with purpose on purpose because you do have to be intentional. You have to intentionally believe and intentionally say yes and intentionally act on that. Be um, like, take that step or jump out of your boat like Peter did. You have to actually do it in order to see the miracle that's gonna happen on the other side. Um, and it's scary. It is, but Jesus will always be there. He will always catch you. He won't let you fall. He won't let you fail. Uh, even if it feels like you're falling, like Peter started sinking into the waves, Jesus was right there to pick him up and pull him back up. So God's going to pick you up and pull you back up if you start to falter. So you don't have to worry. Okay. So Dan's points are for this message. Number one, God has placed in me more than I realize. God has placed more within me than I realize. So you already have in you everything that is needed to fulfill your purpose. God, before you were even born, he already knew your name. He already knew exactly how your life needed to play out. He already, it says in Psalm 139, that he laid out the days of your life before you even took a breath, before you even took one step down the path of that of your life. He laid out good works for you to walk in. All you have to do is say yes to him and start walking in those things that he has laid out for you. But he's already put in you the personality that you need, the gifts that you need. He's placed us on the earth at this time uh, very purposefully for the people that are living in your area at this time in history, um, in your region of the world, wherever you are. He's put you there on purpose at this time in history very purposefully. So he's already given you and equipped you with everything that you have need of. You have the gifts to reach the right the people that he wants you to reach. You don't have to have all the gifts and you don't have to compare yourself to anybody else because you have what's needed for the people who are in your life that God wants you to reach with the purpose that he's put on the inside of you. How are you going to love God, God best and how are you going to love people best? You're going to use the gifts that God put in you. You're going to use the knowledge that you're gaining every day when you read the word or when you're listening to podcasts different things like that. So he has a different group of people for me to reach and a different group of people for you to reach. I want to reach everybody that he has planned for me. And so I want to just keep saying yes to God, Lord. I want to um, fulfill the entire purpose that you have for my life. And I pray that over my kids a lot. Like if you have kids, pray that over your kids every night if you can. Lord, bless them with favor, bless them with the um, knowing what their gifts are and believing in your power that lives in them and let them fulfill all of your plans for their life. Don't let one thing go undone or wasted. You know, um, pray that kind of thing over your kids because that is what God wants to do. So you already have in you what's needed to reach the people that you are supposed to reach. And it's okay that you are completely different from everybody else. I said over the weekend in my message uh, at the conference, I said, you can be shy and quiet and still be a good leader because you are a leader of people that are drawn to your personality. They are drawn to your gifts and they are drawn to your personality on purpose. It's still, they're drawn to Jesus in you, but you have different gifts and a different personality on purpose because you're going to be like people, different people are going to be drawn to you than, than are to me. You know, it's okay that everybody doesn't like you. It's okay that everybody isn't drawn to you. You know, you can't, you're, you know, you're not going to be everybody, everything to everybody. <laughs> so, um, and that took me a while to realize that like when you have a people pleaser nature or you're like want approval from people, which I did for many, many years. You tend to want to um, 
make everybody like you or you're worried if you do something that somebody doesn't like or all of a sudden somebody rejects you and you're like, what did I do wrong? It's okay, that's gonna happen with everybody because you don't have the personality that everybody is drawn to. God didn't make you with every single gift in the entire universe, you know, otherwise you would be God, <laughs> you know? It takes all of us working together to reach um, the entire world. So you have what you need don't worry that it's different from somebody else. You are a good leader just because you carry the Holy Spirit. And you carry the Holy Spirit in a super powerful way, whether you are quiet or uh, loud. You can be bold if you are quiet and shy. You can still have a gentle boldness about you. You can be confident even if you're quiet and you are absolutely a good leader no matter what personality you have because you carry the Holy Spirit who is God Almighty in you and there are people that you can reach. Okay, so <laughs> got preaching there for a minute um, because I'm passionate about this stuff, you guys. This morning, this is a side note. This morning, God was talking to me about the word compassion you know how Jesus was moved with compassion? And whenever he was moved with compassion, he did miracles. He healed somebody. He raised the dead out of compassion. He um, opened blind eyes out of compassion. He fed the hungry out of compassion. All of these things out of compassion. Well, the word compassion literally means come into passion. So what like sometimes we think of compassion as a, oh, just a really lovey, gentle um, emotion, but compassion is come into passion. It can be quiet and gentle. Yes, it is. Sometimes just putting an arm around somebody or crying with somebody or letting them cry on your shoulder, that's compassion and it is gentle and is loving, but it is strong and powerful. It is not any weaker than any other emotion. Compassion is so strong, it causes healing, it causes miracles to happen. So come into passion. Passion is a very fiery emotion. So Jesus was feeling on the inside this fiery emotion. Sometimes it was expressed in a very gentle way, but sometimes it was expressed in a very bold way. When he had compassion and he was like, mad at the devil. He was like, oh no, you don't devil. You let those people go. You know, you, you let those people go. And so sometimes I feel that. I don't know. Do any of you guys feel that sometimes when you feel compassion for somebody, you do feel like this passion rising up on the inside of you and just have to do something about it for them. So anyways, that's the word compassion. Say yes to God and the impossible will happen. So point number two and let me just read a couple of these. Um, Ruth, love is the most important choice. Exactly. Fear rejection is huge, but love overcomes fear. You are so right. So God has more within me than I realize. I already have everything in me that, that's needed. And God has more for me than I realize. No, God is always for you. He is not against you. He's already prepared you. He's already prepared the future for you. He's already prepared the people resources that you have need of. He's already prepared the provision that you have need of. He has way more for you than you even realize. There's a scripture that says, um, oh man, I want to find it. It's, it's in the New Testament and it says that... Um, it's about the mighty power of God that is for us who believe. Like, God wants to display his power through your life because his power through your life, it's for you to show the world who he is. Like, his power is for you. <laughs> I mean, I want to say, like, there's no English word to really describe what I'm trying to say, but I want to say that God has given you his power to use. <laughs> it's kind of like, that's not really the right word, but he's given you his power to use in order to show the world who he is, how powerful he really is, how loving he really is, how compassionate he really is. So his power is for you. It's for you. He already has prepared everything for you. Um, I'll look up that scripture later and I'll put it in the comments, you guys. I think it's in Colossians. I 
believe it's Colossians 1 or possibly Ephesians 1. But God's mighty power that is for those who believe. His power's for you. The impossible is for you to show people who he is. Okay. So number three, point number three is that God can do more through me than I realize. All right. So God has placed more in you than you realize. God has more for you than you realize. And God can do more through you than you realize. So we really have been saying all of this um, throughout this entire message. But when you are intentional about surrendering to God and you just take a step and you say, yes, God, I'm going to be obedient to you. And then you actually act on it and begin to do the thing that you said yes to. You can see God's power begin to be manifested. You can see that your purpose is beginning to unfold. You can see that people's lives are beginning to be changed. And God is doing more through you than you realize could happen. Um, I mentioned earlier, like, he gives you his grace. He gives you his grace when, he sa when you say yes to him. And you're like... I don't know how this is going to work, God. I feel so weak. I don't feel like I have everything that I need, but I'm just going to believe you and I'm going to trust you. I'm going to say yes to you. And then he gives you his grace, which is God's mighty power to do what you cannot do. He will do through you what you cannot do on your own. He adds his super to your natural is how we like to say it. And then the impossible breaks forth out of your life. Like, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it all the time. Everything I say yes to. Last year, I said yes to a business that I thought I'll have no, there's no way I have time for that. And there's no way that, you know, I just don't think, I'm not sure if God will use that, whatever. But God told me, say yes. And he's like, there will be a harvest. And I've seen the harvest and I'm still continuing to see that harvest. Like people, it's always about people. He wants to get you into the lives of more people and he wants to do the impossible and the miraculous through you for more and more people. And so I'm seeing that result unfold because I was like, okay, I don't know, see how this could be true, but I'm going to believe you anyways. So, um, that will happen for you. Whatever you do, just do it for the glory of God and just know that the impossible will come out of it. Um, this is another little side note that God keeps speaking to me over the weekend. From my own message on Saturday, God keeps speaking back to me something that I said in one of my points was, um, God wants you to do the same thing that you've done before, but do it in a new way, like with deeper faith and deeper trust in God. Say yes to God again, to the same things that maybe you've been doing for years. Because Peter and the disciples, they had been working hard all night. It was kind of a dark season for them. Like you could say, I've been going through a dark season. I've been working really hard. It's not really doing anything for me. But God's like, go out again and, and try once more. Just go deeper this time. So I feel like he's asking all of us, he's asking me personally, but all of you, do the same thing you've been doing, but do it with deeper faith. Go again, have faith again to, to believe him that you're, you're going to reach more people, that your efforts are going to bear fruit this time. Just do it in a new way, in a different way, maybe with a different group of people in front of you, but do the same thing you've always done. Love God and love people. That's the same thing you've always done. Just do it in a deep, with deeper trust and deeper faith. Do it in a, with a, maybe a new group of people. So anyways, I don't know who that's for, but it was for me. I'm still chewing on it. God keeps telling it to me over the weekend. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Did you guys have any comments on that? Um, I just feel like we're going to see an explosion of miracles in the body of Christ. And what has to happen for miracles to happen, <laughs> there needs to be a need for it. So don't feel bad if you feel like 
oh, everything is crazy and uh, why does it seem like things are falling apart? I thought miracles were gonna happen. Well, if miracles are gonna happen, there has to be a need for a miracle, right? So if you find out some news that you didn't, that you didn't wanna hear or whatever, we'll go to God and we'll believe that a miracle is gonna happen, okay? So I've been seeing it in provision. People are giving me testimonies. From the beginning of the year, we did the Blessed Life series and people are lately coming to, to us with testimonies, how they started tithing and then something, some things financially fell apart for them, but they continued to tithe and believe God at his word and he has opened up some doors of blessing that are in like huge impossible things are happening for these people as they just continue to believe God and be obedient to him and trust him. So miracles are breaking out, even though at first it looked difficult or some looked like it wasn't going to happen, you know? So um, just know that if there's a need for a miracle, miracles are going to happen as you believe God and you just um, say yes to him. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that? Yes, Julie, ignore the enemy's purpose, but use God's purpose. Yeah, right. Jesus just healed. He had compassion and he just healed people. Um, right, virtue is power. You're uh, Ruth. That's good. So you guys, let me just pray because I know we're probably coming to the end of our time right now, but if you're just popping on now, you can go back. I'm going to post it and you can go back and watch it. Also, you can watch some of our previous ones. I have put them all, I've kept them all on our Facebook page, but I also have uploaded them to our YouTube um, channel. So if you want to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to that, you can. It's just Dan and Emily Klotz on YouTube. And um, you can share that with your friends too. If, if you have any friends that maybe aren't on Facebook, they might want to watch on YouTube once in a while. So yeah, I love it, you guys. You have tons of wisdom, but we are definitely all fulfilling. We want to fulfill everything that God has planned for us. Oh, Karen has a question. Let's see. When we do things many times but don't see fruit, can you share how that is not in vain? Yes. Okay, so Karen, that would be a good example of from Luke 5, how the disciples, they were doing what they felt like they were supposed to do and they weren't seeing fruit from it. Now, obviously you want to ask God. You want, It has to be an obedience to God because if you're doing something that's not bearing fruit and God is like, well, I never asked you to do that, you know, in the first place, then, um, then you just adjust and you're like, okay, God, maybe there's a different way to do it or maybe I didn't hear what you actually wanted me to do. But if you feel like you've been obedient to God and you're just not seeing the fruit yet, you're continuing to plow the ground, you're continuing to plant the seed, you're doing the same thing over and over, but not seeing fruit, that it may be that the timing for that is God is saying like, he's gonna make it clear, he's gonna go like, Yes, the fishermen were fishing all night. Exactly, Karen. So they were fishing all night. They weren't catching any fish. And they came back in. They listened to Jesus preaching. And they were like, basically, Peter surrendered his boat to Jesus at the time. He, and so that was a picture of him surrendering his business, surrendering his livelihood to Jesus. And, and just like um, receiving from Jesus for a little bit. And I know that's something that God has asked you to do too. Just kind of sit and receive for a little bit. Um, and then Jesus told him exactly what to do. And he was like, go out again. Like do the same thing again, but this time go out a little deeper. So he might ask you to do the same thing again after you kind of like receive from Jesus for a little bit. Okay, all right, Lord. Um, is there any adjustment that you need me to make? I'm just yielding to you right now. Yes, it can be exhausting, Ruth, but you will have grace. If he asks you to go out again, you're going to have grace to do it and you're not going to be tired in it. Like it's going to be a huge harvest that you've been waiting for and you'll be so relieved that he actually came through for you. Yes, Karen, it could be fishing all night was in their own power. It, it could be... It, 
that can be interpreted that way or it could just have been the timing, you know, that they just needed to they just needed to hear a word from Jesus to go like, okay, now's the time and this is how I want you to do it. But that is really true because really they were exhausted, so they didn't have their own strength. So they had to rely on Jesus and be completely obedient to him. And they had to lean on the Holy Spirit and go like, I got nothing, but Jesus told me to do it again. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to trust him deeper. I'm going to go out again. I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to believe that the result's going to be different this time. So yes, it is kind of a picture of doing it in their own strength for a while and getting to the point of exhaustion so that they had to rely on the Holy Spirit. They had to lean on just believing that, Jesus, you're going to come through because I got nothing. Like, you know. Um, so I, I do kind of feel that, Karen. At least for me, I'm a doer. <laughs> so I can tend to do something for a long time. And it's not producing fruit for me. And I'm like, I'm exhausting myself and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. And then God says, no, just rest here for a minute. Just listen to me for a minute. And, um, and then he's like, okay, now that you're really tired, go do that thing again. Go, go do that again. Now you have to trust me. You have to rely on me because you got nothing in yourself to offer. And so then the result is all completely him. Like it says in um, 1 Corinthians, um, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 2. Let me just look it up really quick. I love the scripture where Paul is like, I came to you in weakness and trembling. Now Paul was really educated. He was a really good speaker because he had been educated by the best of the best of the rabbis. And he was a really good teacher. But he said, when I first came to you, it's 1 Corinthians 2, brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and I didn't use impressive wisdom like I learned in order to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ who was crucified. So I came to you in weakness. I got nothing. God. I got nothing. I came to you in weakness. I was timid and I was trembling and my message and my preaching were very plain. He's like, I didn't come with fancy words. Everything was plain. Instead of using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. So when you're at a point where there, you got nothing in yourself and you're exhausted because you've been working, yes, in your own strength maybe for a long time, all night and feeling exhausted, then you have to rely on the power of God because you have no power or strength in yourself. Um, not by might and not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So yeah, yeah, Judy, I will pray for Mary. Um, does that make sense, Karen? So God may, may go like, okay, now's the time. I want you to go out again. And this time you're going to do the same thing with a new group of people or maybe even the same people. You're going to do it with deeper trust and you're going to do it with deeper faith because I'm asking you to do it and it's not going to be in your own strength. It's going to be completely Holy Spirit led and driven and you and the entire world around you is going to see the power of God displayed. <laughs> Good. Awesome, Karen. I'm glad that was helpful. Um, anybody else definitely put some questions in there and I would love to answer them um, later, but share this with your groups and with your um, on your page if you can. And I will also be posting it um, on some groups, but I'll post it on our YouTube channel. Okay. Love you guys. Let me just pray for you real quick. So father, I thank you for everybody watching today and everybody watching the replay. I thank you, Lord, that you are, um, you are giving them greater faith in who you are in them and through them. Lord, whoever, however powerful they believe you to be, Lord, is how they're going to show you to the world. And so I thank you, God, that they are beginning to believe that you are almighty God and that they are good leaders with purpose to live out on this earth 
in order to reach people that only they can reach. So Lord, be, continue to speak um, courage into each one of these people. Lord, continue to speak destiny and purpose into them. Continue to give them the faith and the strength and the courage to say yes to you, even when it looks scary, even when it feels exhausting, even when um, it seems like it doesn't make sense, Lord. Let us say yes to you so that we can fulfill the entire plan and purpose that you have planned for us, God. We want, we don't want one bit of, of what you did for us to be wasted, Lord. We want to show you to all the people that you have planned for us um, to reach and, and to um, impact, Lord, on purpose. So help us to live intentionally. I just thank you for every single one of these. And Lord, um, I lift up Mary and we just pray for healing over her from head to toe in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for miracles breaking out in all of uh, our families and our lives and our ministries and our businesses, Lord. Show yourself mighty and strong through your people in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, you guys, as an aside, when I'm saying that whole thing about God wants to show himself strong through you, um, that scripture for this year about um, the son of righteousness is rising with healing in his wings. I felt like, and I've been feeling like again, Jesus, we are the body of Christ on the earth. And Jesus is saying, you, my people are rising as the son of righteousness. And there's healing in my wings through you, my people. You are going to blaze like the son of righteousness. You are going to be bright with my glory. You are going to rise up and shine brighter than ever before. And there's healing in my wings, in my rays, in my, um, the light <laughs> from your eyes, <laughs> from your actions, there's healing, um, through, you know, in Jesus through you. So that's who you are. On the we are the body of Christ on the earth, and so we are the sun of righteousness rising at this time in history with healing and miracles. So I love you guys, and um, please like and share. All right, I'll talk to you soon.